The goal in today's video is getting some roof on. There's the duckaroos. Headed out. The ducks and the turkeys are the bestest of friends. So we've got this, this is actually used 5V metal and it's only a year old and I'll tell you the story how we got it as we get to installing it. We actually had an awesome subscriber named Wes Peter track me down who knew this was available, got a hold of me and uh, kind of made the whole arrangement and deal for us. But let's get into what we're looking at here. I hope you like birds because they're, they're gonna be on us all day today. So if you remember, this side over here is gonna be the bird area. And then this side over here, we're gonna build a couple stalls. This will be the goat area. That's gonna be a sliding door that right on out. Right on out here. And eventually, down into the field for the goats. And I just got this all sitting here. We're just gonna try to cut it up top. Save me some trips up and down the ladder. And uh, I already marked it. You can see it right there. But you just take the speed square, slide it over, just match up that same mark. That one right there, the four. Pencil it. And we'll just try to cut it in place. The off cut might, uh, might take you out, so hold on there. Beautiful. Beautiful. All 17 and a quarter. Good enough, bud. There we go. We got one in that in. That'll hold it for now. I'll come around and get a couple more in a second. Beautiful. Love it. We got that on there. You can see from the bottom side, we already have the purlins on this bottom section. But uh, when I realized I was gonna use used metal, I went ahead and held off on the purlins on the back side. I figured we'd put those on spaced in a way that's gonna work with the used metal so we're not trying to fight it the whole time. So let's pull some measurements and see what we have metal-wise. Then we can get some purlins on there. Perfect. I, I don't... I don't like wearing tool belts. I just hate having stuff on me. But when you're up and down a ladder, it's hard to uh, hard to argue the convenience. So we've got two different lengths here. I think we've got seven footers and eight footers. Yeah, the eight footers will work. Mango. It's not the time. You're not mango. Well. Congratulations, it's getting stronger. I thought you were mango for a minute. You're the young one. Eight foot's right about here, so that'll be perfect. Uh, we'll have to trim a, little, a few inches off, but that'll work good on this side. We can do it in one piece. But on the back side, because we overhang up the front and off the back, we're longer than eight foot and obviously longer than seven foot. So we'll have to run a splice in it. We'll run a purling where that splice is gonna be. It's not ideal, but it's definitely not a problem by any means, it'll be fine. So let's see exactly what we are on this side. One eighteen and a half. Uh, let's just call her ten foot. It's the fifth time I've done this because this chicken, she's just she's agitated. I.
I what? She's broody, and there's there's a fence here, and she's got a nest in there. And she, I'm gonna be working here, and you're gonna have to deal with it. No respect. You try to build them a nice home. So this is used 5V rough metal. It's about a year old. Like I said, a subscriber named Wes Peter reached out. His grandfather actually brought this back from Florida. He goes down to Florida every year, stays at RV parks. I'm not 100% sure how he ended up with it, but he ended up with it. He brought it back to good old Indiana, and I was able to get it off of him for a really good price. It's in really good shape. In fact, you can still see it's got barcodes and everything on it. It does have some screw holes in it already on the seven footers. There's some right here, which that'll work perfect. That'll, that'll be the bottom most likely. That gives us a little bit of an overhang. And then we've got a set right here in the middle and a set down at the other end. So we're gonna kind of plant our purlins off of where those holes are at already. So we don't, we're not fighting it the whole time. So let me do a little bit of math and marking. I'll get some lines chalk and we'll start getting some purlins on. So I got all the screw holes accounted for and measured. I think we've got a way we can make all this work and even have the seams overlap the correct way. So I'm pretty excited. I got one line shocked. Let's go ahead and get some purlins up. It's gonna try like Heck. Well, there goes all my chalk lines. Tack on it, bud. Well, at least the two by fours are going to get clean. We'll at least get this one on so we're not losing our line and then we'll just have to come back a little bit later. <laughs> not cool, man. Not cool. Goodness gracious. Rain appears to be done. Skies look awesome. Let's get to work. And by the way, with all the rain we've had recently, if you remember in the previous a couple videos ago, we raised the overflow or the water level of the pond. The pond is up to the new level. So I'll take you down and we'll look at that later. Beautiful. It'll give us plenty, plenty to nail onto or screw onto. Oh no. How did that happen? We use one bit, a whole bunch, like a T25, like most people do nowadays with T25 torxes. Don't just buy one at a time, you know, just buy a whole bunch. You hate for a 25 cent bit to be the reason you gotta stop production. So the next step, at least on that back side, is gonna be drip edge. I know I said it's gonna do black drip edge, but I went ahead and just got some galvanized, nothing fancy. Then we'll do black fascia with black gutter. But uh, there you have her, bud. We've got the save them after every job site roofing nails. Just pour some those. Doesn't really take a lot. One, two, three, three of them should get us.
got the drip edge all the way down this side. I'm going to start on that end, start bringing the metal this way. So this is going to be a little bit different than how I'd normally put up metal just because we're using used metal. But on this 5E metal and most roof metals, there's a, a leading edge and then a, an overlap edge. So you can see the difference on what I'm going to call the leading edge here. See how it has that little flange that comes out? That's so it can rest on that. And then on the overlap edge, it stops just like that. And that is so that can rest inside right there without holding the metal off of that rib right there. So it does matter which side you put on. You have to pay attention to that. You don't want to start on the wrong end and then you're kind of in trouble. And since we're kind of committed with the way we have the screw holes, we're just going to kind of have to do what the metal lets us do. Making sure she lines up pretty good. My overhang is somewhat consistent. And trying to make sure if I can make a minor adjustment that all my screw holes will fit. But like I said, these are really the only important ones. Oh, hey wasp, get, get. This is not the time. I just, let me finish building it first. Oh dear, you're going to have to balance on the purlin, bud. Looking about 47. What I'm hoping is we can cut the rest of the seven footers in half and make it work. But it's, it's going to be close. We can hold this metal downhill just a little bit because there is going to be some rake trim. I might even use ridge cap and just kind of bend it one of the two and you know we can bring that back a few inches if we need so let's measure one of these seven footers or whatever they are and uh, see what halfway is and see if we can make that work somehow so most of these are about 81 which should put me 40 and a half it's just not gonna be enough to cover up the screw holes below but do i have enough that i can just you know, you know what I'm thinking here. One, two, three, twelve, thirteen. Well, if a fellow wanted, I could cut them however long I need them to be. There's gonna be like two foot overhang. I mean, we gotta do what we gotta do, don't we? They make all kinds of fancy cutting tools for tin. Uh, some people use a grinder. You can use a grinder. It's gonna burn all your finish off, though. You'll end up rusting right there. They make little, you know, air-powered cutters, all kinds of fancy things. I've got snips because run what you brung and, you know, it's really not that bad. It is easier, however. Because it wants to roll up as you cut. You take the smaller side, it's just easier to manage. Twelve more to go. So I have just a couple more to cut. It's actually the following morning. I got super distracted. I got a heck of a deal on half of a Ford Ranger. I had to go take advantage of that real quick. Let me get the last couple of these cut. We'll get them up on the roof.
turkeys are trying to figure out how to get up here with us. They're working on a solution. So if you're wondering why we ran this other purling so close to that one, it's to catch that already existing screw pattern so we can get those holes filled in. These are gonna be a little bit longer than what we need them, but I'd rather have too much and then trim it off and be able to make all these screw holes work up, give myself a little bit of play so that all the screw holes can line up when we overlap here. All right, so there is another storm moving in. We've got just a little bit of time. Oh, it's awkward right here. Where's that purlin right there? We got just a little bit of time before the rain gets here, according to the ever reliable radar. Now we're gonna try to get this section on, but before we do, I gotta put a rubber strip on it. I threw a screw in each one of these because it's supposed to storm last night and I didn't want anything blown away on the top side. So what I've got here is three inches wide. It's double stick on both sides. It's just like a waterproofing seam membrane. We're gonna lay that on here. I'm gonna clean it off first. I got some acetone and a rag. Just clean it off so we have good adhesion. It'll keep water or snow or whatever from coming up underneath that seam over time. But I gotta get these screws out first. So we're just gonna peel it that as we go. Make sure I got the right edge going, the right direction here. I don't know if that's gonna hit wood or not. So I mean, we just gotta kinda slide them around and make them work. The ultimate goal is that rain doesn't get in. So as long as we can get that out of it, I'll be happy with it. Let's see if this even hits wood here. Or if we gotta go up a little higher. Oh, it feels good, yeah. Oh yeah. You can see it's just about here. Trees are blowing like crazy. Wind's coming in. That turned out fine. It looks good. There's a few clunky seams, but it'll keep the rain out. It fits the budget and it'll do the job. That means it's perfect by my standards. I'm gonna get that metal strapped together and tied down so we don't end up with it with some field confetti. And uh, I'll meet you guys after the storm, okay? All right, here we go. I do know some people are gonna to wanna to know, so before I hop down, I'll put my life at risk for you guys. That's uh, that's how we ended up, by pure luck. Look how straight those seams look, not bad. I mean, it's got a little goat in its grass, but it's not, it's not the worst I've ever seen. That's just luck, fellas. 
sometimes a guy can use a little bit of luck. Oh, you say, you got the right idea. At this point, half of it's on the roof, which means now we can set our tools down here. All right, we got another little break in the weather. Oh, where'd you go? There you go. Let's see if we can't go ahead and get the metal on this section here. So apparently the first half of this, I was shooting the whole thing in 4K. That explains the large media files. So whenever we were kind of making this up in our head, in case you haven't figured it out, I just kind of make things up as I go. When I was looking at this, I wanted a row of windows right here. This faces the correct direction so that in the wintertime, the sun kind of comes in at this low angle. So we're looking for a little bit of passive solar in the summertime or in the wintertime. And then, of course, in the summertime, just some daylight in the barn without having to have lights on or electricity down here. But in uh, my vision, I failed to take into account this fella here. So we're only up or down to, I guess, eight and a quarter inches, which you're not gonna find a window like that. And even if you did, by the time you get done with the frame, you only got like three inches of glass. So it's not gonna do a whole lot of good. The solution I came up with is I'm just gonna block out here. I'm gonna put a two by four out to here. We're gonna add another purling right here. And then at some point, I don't have the lumber, but at some point we'll add, I'll call it the back of the flashing, like a flashing stop. So the flashing has something solid to nail into that'll come out off the roof. We'll put that here. That'll allow us, uh, by blocking out a little bit, to get a 12 inch window in there the way we want it. It's a little bit goofy. I think when it's all said and done, it'll turn out and look just fine. What that means for today is we've got to add another purling, a two by four purling right here. And the roof metal is going to stop right where that one starts. If you're going to be like me, just make stuff up as you go with no actual plan in life because plans always go off the rails anyway. So what's the point of planning? You got to be able to roll with stuff sometimes, come up with on the fly solutions, but that should work really well for us. Once we get the lumber for it, we'll block out here, give the window something to nail to, and we'll block up here. Give it something to nail to down here. Leave enough room we can tuck some flashing up underneath it and out onto the top of the 5V metal. But I want to go ahead and get the rest of the full panels up in this video, and I promised you an, an update on the pond, so we'll get down to that too. So this is a trick I learned way back when uh, I was working summers and part-time back in college for a remodeling company to just go ahead and pre-mark and pre-drill all the holes for the screws. Now you got to have good measurements for your purlings and make sure you have your leading edge facing the right way when you're doing it, but it saves you so much time and trouble when you're up on the roof. I just use an eighth inch bit. It's a little bit smaller than the screw shank itself, so the screw's still cutting the metal, but you're not sitting there fighting it, trying to get it started. You're not worrying about making sure everything's in a straight line because everything's pre-drilled together. The biggest thing, though, you, you will break bits doing this is it goes through three or four or five sheets as it catches like the sixth sheet or whatever. It'll kind of bite awkwardly and twist the screw and break it off. But aside from that, it's a pretty slick system and definitely saves a lot of trouble.
So that's as far as we can go that way until we get into, hey, boss. I wanna go ahead, I should be able to go ahead and get four full pieces on there. I wanna get that knocked out real quick. Just like that, looks really nice. Everything planes on there fits really well. I've already got the fifth piece cut right there. That's spaced out and measured perfectly for that fifth piece to go on there. But before we can put that on there, I've got a track and a two by six. I thought I had a two by six long enough to do that, but I do not. Gotta get that fly rafter on before we put that there. By the way, this year reminder, we've got over 400 videos on stuff like this and stuff around the homestead and working for Dirt Perfect and building ponds and working on all kinds of crazy projects. So if you like what you're seeing, make sure you're subscribed and definitely make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see how this works out because tomorrow I'm gonna keep working on this. get quite a bit more stone down here at some point in the future in fact all that is going to be stone remember there's going to be a gate with a post opens up goes down there and that'll all be fenced off in the field for the goats but i figured i'd pull just a little bit of stone down here to uh, at least keep us out of the mud when we walk over to the barn got the wood up off the ground on saw horses the metal staged and ready to go tools are all where they now hold on you guys saw it. It's right there if I ask. Staged and ready to go. We're ready for the next step in here. Not bad. Definitely coming along. I need to put that saw away. I promised you an update on the pond. Let's go check it out. So while we were gone on our trip, I talked to the neighbor and he said they got seven inches of rain while we were out of town. You can see the new pond level. A lot of people were asking about the color that it was. That is all pond dye. We just put the pond dye in there. It just makes it, you know, more appealing. It looks nicer, which makes it feel nicer to swim in, I guess. Doesn't hurt to fish, doesn't hurt anybody that swims in it. It's just, um, just kind of makes things look nice. I don't know if you can make out all the bluegills swimming over here. They think it's feeding time. It's not, it's just, it's outro time. But you can see right here, you can see that dirt line. That's how high the water got with seven inches of rain in about four days. So even with all that rain, it never once was more than this little setup could handle. So it looks good. Still gotta get a little bit more concrete down in that bucket. Uh, we're underwater now, that makes it a little trickier, but not impossible. Get those concrete stakes out in the bucket out of there. But it is at its new level. That is where it'll be. And it looks awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed what we're working on. When I said I got a good deal on half of a Ford Ranger, I meant I got a good deal on half of a Ford Ranger. We'll talk about that in the future. It's going to be a good time. That's it. I'll catch you on the next one. Back up on the chicken coop slash goat barn. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to address them in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one.